doesn't matter. Well, hey, Mike, it's nice to see you. Thank you, Nat. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Very Fantastic. well. Fantastic. Yeah. So if anyone doesn't know who Mike is, Mike, Mike Tobin, Michael Tobin, uh, OBE, he's um, a tech entrepreneur and philanthropist, right? Yeah, that's uh, apparently what they describe me as. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think they use another few choice words occasionally, but I probably can't repeat those here. Well, I think with the title of your, of your book, Forget Strategy, uh, Get Results, right? I don't think they like that one too much. Well, not when, not when you're a public company CEO, they probably don't, but uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll soon learn to do so. Um, but uh, all, my, all my theories have been born out to be successful so far. And there we go. It's usually because I'm surrounded by great people, as you, yeah. as you are now. Exactly. Thanks, Mike, for jumping on. It's, uh, it's super Bye. to uh, see you again. And yeah, so today we're going we're gonna to kind of talk on a high level around data protection and privacy. We're not going to go into like loads of techie stuff because I'm not a techie. I don't yeah. program or anything. Um, but, you know, I know you've got a bit of an alternative view about this and I'm kind of edging in the direction of where you are, especially with this current situation that we find ourselves in. Because I know, you know, Google and Apple did this, did this thing and they've, they've, they've offered, offered the API over to companies and governments so they can produce these apps and then people can actually... Um, share their data of where they are in relation to other people that are uh, potentially infected with COVID-19, right? So do you think people should be worried about their online privacy? Well, well, so, so, I mean, you know, specifically looking at that, that, uh, that scenario, because it, it's extremely sensitive to all of us at the moment, everyone is, is, is impacted by, by COVID and, and um, you know, we're, we're all fearful of, of contracting it or transmitting it or, or putting people in harm's way. And, and, you know, it's, there's a clear and obvious value to sharing that, that, that capacity to track people. And even if it's kind of at the moment, track, you know, your own ability to track yourself um, and saying, um, I'm putting this into the context of knowing who I'm going to be nearby. And if any of those people have had or have shown symptoms of COVID, then I shouldn't be in anywhere near them. You know, that's a good, you know, there's a value in that. And everyone can see it just like instantly. You don't have to sit there and have a debate about, you know, whether that's a, a positive thing or not. It's very clear. Now, and, and yet when it comes down to sharing that, that same data for, for example, um, uh, proactive targeted marketing, then suddenly people don't like it. Right. Then it's an, it's an, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, an abuse of my, of my, uh, my personal privacy and things like that. Well, you know, you could, there is a school of thought that says that, that, you know, you're, you should be allowed to turn it on and off, but you know, how much junk mail do we get through our letterboxes? How much junk mail do we get in our email boxes? How much, how, how many times do you, you know, you walk down Oxford street and people jump out of, out of, out of perfumery is going, Hey, can I talk to you? Can I ask you a question? It's like, go get, it happens, right? It's like really annoys me, especially when you're on the phone. You're walking down the phone, they can clearly see you're engaging in a conversation. And, and someone jumps out and goes, can I ask you a question? It's like, you know, and, and, I, and I think, you know, it, it's, it's clearly an abuse of your privacy um, in, in those scenar scenarios as well. So the online world, data, the online data world is simply an extension of the real world. Okay, and we have these situations in the real world as we do in the online world, and and you know we, we can't easily legislate for the individual. We can't turn on and off the ability of that guy to jump out of his shop and try and sell me a, a, a smelly stick or whatever he's trying to do at that point. But we do have the ability to control it online to a certain extent, right? Because we can choose what data we allow people to share or what be, um, we allow people to use through cookies, through, through, through various, various things. And it's, you know, since um, GDPR in Europe, um, you know, everyone will be very used to every time you log in, almost every time you log into a website now, you know, you see the, do you accept the cookies? And, you know, we're at the point now where no one cares. I mean, oh God, you know, what's the option of accepting the cookie? You can't progress on the, on the website unless you accept it. And, you know, so they're kind of forcing you into, um, you know, their, their compliance of GDPR. Um, so, so I think the first thing to think about is, you know, data protection is not an online only thing. 
um, data privacy or your privacy is not an online only thing. It happens in the real world. And we, we just think about it differently because it's a physical thing that we can probably contextualize better. So the second thing is, is it good or bad? Right. And, and I personally think, you know, it's, it's, if I get bombarded with things anyway, i.e. the guy jumping out in front of me in the street when I'm on the phone, i.e. The, the, the junk mail that comes through my letterbox, the, the rubbish that comes into my inbox, shouldn't we be able to curate it in a better way, right? Now, you know, if, if I I'll give you an example. So, so if, I, if I go onto a free website and I have to put, the only thing I need to do rather than pay for the content of this website is simply put in my details, i.e. register. But I don't, I'm thinking, oh, I don't want this company to know my details. So I'm going to put in there a fake birthday, right? And I put in, you know, today's date. Right? Um, you know, is it, any, is it any surprise then that I start to get emails with Mickey Mouse on them and things like that? Because people are sending me stuff that's appropriate to a one-year-old. Right, as opposed as opposed to appropriate to me, and I say, why am I getting this rubbish? Well, because you put in rubbish data. But if you're putting in appropriate data, and you start to then allow people to think about you properly, and this is where I'll come to in a second, then surely you know the the mail that you get in the door, the mail you get in your email, and the type of person that jumps out of, out in the street at you, will be more curated to what you are more likely to want, as opposed to rubbish that you're never going to want. Okay, so, so then, you know, then you should start to see it as the same value as the data that you definitely do want is to know when you're going to be standing next to someone with COVID and run away. Right? So there's a bunch of other stuff now that, that starts to add real value to our lives. And if we can get into that mindset when it comes to data, you know, we'll be in a much better, a much more comfortable place to say, well, oh, I get this. I, I actually think that... Um, you know, but the more data and the more accurate data, the more appropriate data I give about me, the more value I'm going to receive from, from, from the world. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. completely, completely. It's, um, it's a real, it's a real minefield though. Like a lot of people are really paranoid about, about their privacy. They're paranoid about their future and they think that it's, um, that it's kind of really risky and, and, and really dangerous to give away all their data. But I read a, read a post this morning on LinkedIn, which made me smile with a security expert. And she said, um, she said, there's so much data out there on us now anyway, because everything's been breached. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. And we, you know, we, we, we worry about online transactions and things like that. But, you know, in back in the day, we used to sign checks. And, you know, how easy was it just to forge a signature? And how would even anyone know if, you, if they only ever, ever received one check from you? How would they even know if it was a good signature or a bad signature? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. It was so easy. You just stole a checkbook and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> right? You, you've got that um, Leonardo DiCaprio film. It was, um, was it Catch Me If You Can? Oh, yeah. Um, was it Abignail? John Abignail or whatever his name was. It's a true story about this guy that just started, you know, he, he, he bought, um, he, he, he printed out checkbooks, right? And then decided that airline pilots were just considered heroes, right? So they could walk into, for example, they could walk into a, um, into a, into a hotel and say, could you cash this check for me? Right. And, and, you know, because checks would take two weeks, three weeks to actually um, get to a bank and get verified or anything else, then, then he would, he would get, um, he would write the name and type the name up on a typewriter and everything. And then, and then to get the TWA logo on the, on the end of the check, because it, it was basically the check of his, his salary coming in, and they would just ask the, 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 the hotel to cash it. And he would, he would buy these Airfix planes, and, and the transfers on the Airfix planes, right? He would use them and, tra and, and put a transfer on the corner of the check, and it would look like a real TWA check. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then the hotel would take them and cash them instantly, give them $100, $200, whatever. Oh. And, and then... And, you know, two weeks later, when, when the bank got it and said, I'm not going to, you know, um, to honor this check, he was gone, right? And, and back in the day, that, that, was, that was how behind we were in terms of verifications and valid, validations of, of people's identities, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing. And yet, you know, we use checks for, for, for decades. And now we've got this super high-tech um, verification of sort of, 
you know, when you type, you know, you put your, 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 your credit card online and you get the kind of thing that's whizzing around and it's saying doing a verification check and, and it sends you a message and you have to type that in. And that's incredibly secure and it's real time. And yet we're still so worried about it because it goes on in what people call the cloud out there that we don't understand where it is. But we feel comfortable with this piece of paper that everyone can copy. <laughs> So, so what's the worst that can happen then with, with, with data being uh, available on everyone? Like what, what's the, I mean, is it, it's already happened, right? Like yeah, Trump got happened. into power and, and, you know, I'm not political in my, in my um, uh, opinions. Yeah. But like, you know, Trump got into power. We had Brexit, right? These things happen because of data. Yeah. And because, and that, as far as well, I'm I concerned, I don't know whether it's because of data, but it's certainly, it's certainly because of social media. I mean, I, I voted for Brexit, but not for any of the reasons that, that were, were, were you know, brandished around for the reasons to, to vote Brexit. And, and, but, but social media did a great job, and, and media in general did a great job. You, know, you, mm -hmm. put, people's, you put fear into people that we have a, a problem with immigration, for example. Yeah. And then everyone says, oh, what's the way to, break, what's the way to fix that? And then fear, fear, fear. Whereas, you know, we don't have a problem with immigration, even pre-Brexit, because no. you know, every time I come back to Heathrow, I still have to show my, 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 my passport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we may have a problem with forged passports, but we don't have a problem with immigration per se, right? We have control over it. So there's no reason for Brexit to be a, a vehicle to control our immigration. No, well, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get deeper into that conversation, <laughs> but like, I, like, chicken no because it's a it's a it's a we could talk about it we we will talk about it i'm sure i was some i was some more whiskey right one day but like but like not today yeah <laughs> look i mean you know the, the thing is that that um you know that there are the the internet is open to um to abuse of influence the same as um any media has been in since the beginning of time i mean just because an 1800s newspaper was an 1800s newspaper the only difference between the influence that that had was the fact that a it doesn't get to as many people and b as many people um not as many people were were literate at the time to read it so you were only looking at a small demographic whereas today um whether you can read or not you can see pictures right you everyone has a tv in the developed world so you put a tv on and whatever ha happened you know whatever that comes on that screen basically gives you, you know, gives you information that the, according to a level of kind of experience or education or whatever you want to call it, you, you, you weigh more or less weight to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, the, the, um, you know, the, 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 the Brexit campaign was a perfect example of um, exploiting people's fears um, for a, for an outcome, right? Yeah. Which, that no one knew the 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 outcome that happened if people voted Brexit and whether the fears of that should be greater than the fears of staying, but nevertheless the the you know the the, the marketing worked. Yeah. Um. And so so I think you know we we can use that same distribution you know of 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 media in a good way, and you know getting the message out for people to stay indoors. Um, would have had to have required much more dracon dr draconian measures of, of police enforcement had it not been for, for media and social media getting the message across, right? So, right. so you know, there, there, are, there are positives in that. It's just a question of the fact that, you know, the, 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 the populace have varying levels of, of um, experience and education, and I put both those things in there, uh, um, which mean that they they are more or less susceptible to um, unverified information that comes through comes through media. Got you, got you. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. if you suddenly say the world's going to end tomorrow, thirty. You know, I saw this article, and I don't know. Again, I don't know how verified it is, but um, I saw this article the other day from the US where where the guy was going through supermarkets and just videoing the beers, and people sold, bought all the beer in the supermarket. Um, uh, in, um, in, in, uh, in quantity because they were going to be staying at home, except right at the end is the Corona beer, right? <laughs> they, were, they were like, oh, it's Corona, it's coronavirus. Yeah. 
And so, uh, you know, and, and you know, one can never legislate for 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 um, lack of brain power of people, but but nevertheless, <laughs> um, you know, that's the you, biggest problem, isn't it? Is the lack of informed decisions, right? Like that's yeah, basically yeah. what we're talking or, about. Or perhaps the lack of the ability of, of people to, to to receive an informed dis- decision. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But like, let's let's step let's step away from the West and let's and let's look at China and let's look at let's look at the data that they have on people, yeah, and how they're using that. And what do you do? You think that they that they uh, if they had uh, the same human rights standards as we do over here, do you think that they would um, uh, be doing something positive with that? Well, I, I think I think first of all, um, there's a really interesting thing, a really interesting discussion to be had about human rights, right? Because I'm not 100 percent sure, and this is this is going to be a sort of a, an interesting. It's going to spark off an interesting debate on on you know, social media about it. But I'm not sure that we've got human rights right. Um, okay. Because you know, if you if you look at, and I'll come back to specifically answering your question in a minute, but if you, if you look at democracy, for example, right, democracy in itself is a fundamentally flawed concept, but it's probably better than what, many other things that we have. I mean, you know, democracy, you know, if, 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 you, if, you, if you give two people the same vote and one is educated, and one will sit there debating all the all the scenario and debating all the candidates and, the, and and debating all these things in an intellectual way and comes up with an answer and has a vote. And on the other hand, somebody's sitting there swilling beer and watching TV and is influenced by whatever it is he's watching Fox News or whether it's the you know any other funded channel, and he also has a vote. Then then you're applying the value of both those votes to be equal. And, so yet, do you think- somebody, you know, <laughs> and, and yet, and yet, somebody has gone through an entire conceptualization and th- theological view of of what his vote is going to mean, and yeah. the other one hasn't. Wow! Right? And 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 then, but, you, but we're in a democracy, so a human being, regardless of its of, of its intelligence level or its experience level or any other measure that you would imply. Yeah. Or, or or age <laughs> above above the age of voting yeah um is considered equal wow so do you think there should be a test to yeah to, i do i do to... in tobin town right which is which is you know one day i'm going to buy this island and, and it's going to be called tobin town and, and everyone will be allowed but there's certain rules on there right so um but 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 you know if 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 you want if you want to have a democratic vote in the context of dem- democracy Right. I mean, you know, first of all, you, 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 it would all be online. I don't know why we have to go to a, a polling booth and open ourselves up for corruption in that way. Right. Agreed. But yeah, it would be online because security online is much better than security offline, yep. even though people are worried about it. It's much better. Agreed. Um, and, then, and when you, vote, you go through and you choose and you pick a choice. Right. But before your choice gets registered, you get asked a few simple questions about your choice. Right. And the first question, you know, would be like, um, you know, out of these five criteria, what have you just voted for? Right. <laughs> and, if, and if you can actually set, score five out of five of, of, of accurately describing what you've voted for, in other words, um, connecting, the, connecting the, 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 voted, the voter that you voted for to the, the, the principles that he's standing for, yeah. then you get a double vote. Right. If and then the second thing is, you know, if, if you can actually um, uh, verify that that you have, you know, that you've, you've contributed to society in some way, it can be a very nebulous way. Yeah. Then you also have a bonus vote. Right. And if you bring all those things together, nobody is disenfranchised by a vote, but your vote is considered premium if you've actually thought about it or if you've actually. Um, done something to the society that you're going to now influence. Right? Of course, these are very um, sort of controversial topics, and I will never be uh, Tobin, Tobin Town will never be classed as uh, as, a, as a democratic society in the way we know it. But but the point is, if you've made the effort and you've thought about what the consequences of your vote's going to be, shouldn't it be worth more than someone that hasn't? 
definitely. I, 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 that's a really, really interesting way to look at it. <laughs> well, you know, and, 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 and you know, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be educational based, but there should be something surely that, that implies that someone that has more, that has thought about what their vote is, or the consequences of that vote means, surely that vote should mean more than someone that hasn't. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree with you completely on that. I think that's a really good, really good conversation. <laughs> So in Tobin Town, right? You, before you, every vote counts, but some count, some votes would count for more if one can demonstrate that at least you. It doesn't matter what you're voting for, but at least it demonstrates that you know what you're voting for. Yeah, yeah. And all the all the repercussions of that, right? But you still could never beat, in my opinion, in the democracy. You could still never beat a benevolent despot. Right? A, a what? A benevolent despot. Which is. Well, so basically, um, so a, a dictator, but a nice one. Uh, so somebody that would say, you know what, um, I'm going to do what's right for the country. Now, again, one can define whether his opinion of what's right is right. But if he's doing it for reasons that are for the good of the community, the good of the society that, that would otherwise be a democracy, then that's got to be a good thing because you're, you're, su you're surpassing the inevitable um, community that doesn't have a, re a responsible vote or takes their vote irresponsibly. Now, the question is, does a benevolent despot exist? And then you can debate whether one does or not, right? But so, you know, when, while, we're, while we've been debating a new runway at Heathrow Airport in the UK, and it's been about 23 years since the debate of a, a third runway at Heathrow has been, has been in the public domain. Yeah. And I think several years yeah. ago, they actually decided that it was going to be a third runway at Heathrow, but still nothing's really been done because yeah. there's a whole load of debates yeah. about, you know, fighting against that or, or you know, maybe another, another government coming in will have a different view and... But in that time, you know, it, in, it, since the last four years alone, actually in the last five years alone, there's been 63 new airports built in China. Not 63 new runways, 63 new airports. Now, some of those have just gone roughshod over areas that, you know, were people's villages. And you're going, well, for the greater good, we're going to get that out and there's going to be a new runway here. And obviously that's not good either, right? Because you know, it's, it's taking away people's livelihoods and, and things like that. But at some level, somewhere between the two options, there must be a, an optimum value of, of saying, you know, democracy to the extreme is probably not good and dictatorship to the extreme is not good. But somewhere in there, there needs to be someone that has a controlling interest over the greater good. Right. You know, colonies of ants don't mind about the odd one dying here and there because it's for the greater good of the colony that they can continue to fall into the river until they cross the stream and you know so i don't know what i'm talking about but, but, but the point is you know there's a greater good of mankind for the progress and we can define whether building airports is progress or, or not but but in our in the context that we think is progress at the moment that's probably a good thing it allows um, the growth of, of, of poor environments and, and, you know, sort of the leveling up of, of economies and things like that. Hmm. So what about image recognition, uh, data crunching around the image recognition, the movement of people and things like this? Because I know there's been a lot of talk in China about, um, you know, how they basically got this database of all these people and they're, and they're basically using that. Um, yeah. Uh, do you do you think that it's a bad thing that they're doing that or um well i guess the, the, at the end of the day um technology is like toothpaste right once you invent something you can't uninvent it you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube so so if the technology exists today we we need to think about how it's being used we can't sort of say you can't use it because it will get used and then we need to sort of think about how do we how do we regulate it if it needs regulating, and how do we how do we kind of stop it being used for bad bad endings, if you like. Um, but I think generally, I would say more information, more technology is always a good thing, right? 
you know, if, if, you, if, if you have a gun, right, that, that sits on a table, it can, a loaded gun ready to fire, um, without a bad intention person to pull the trigger, that gun itself, i.e. the technology, mm-hmm. is completely innate and will do no harm to anyone. True. So do we think about not inventing guns? Well, we can't because they're invented. The concept of gunpowder and explosives and everything is way, you know, it's done. So, so trying to uninvent the technology element of it, in other words, the facial recognition, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the sort of the data capture element of it all is irrelevant, right? That's gone. That's happened. And we can, we can go be dragged kicking and screaming into the next world, but it will happen. So then we have to turn our attention to how do we, how do we stop someone picking up the gun and doing bad with it? Okay, so rather than trying to stop facial recognition in China being used on a mass thing to monitor people's whereabouts and everything else, why would that necessarily be bad unless the people that, were, that had that information had bad motives? Yes, intentions. Yeah. And, and when, I, when I think of like, you know, people's fear of, da- of data being used in the world, I, I want it to be used. I don't want to be... As we said, I don't want the guy to jump out in front of me while I'm walking down the street with a phone. I want, I want everything to be targeted. Harmonious. Yeah, I want, it to, you know, I want people to know what I need before I even need it to make my life as efficient as possible. And I want five choices of it. Hmm. So, so you know, I want my fridge to tell me before I run out of milk that I'm running out of milk. Right, and then to give me three places I can buy milk that's going to deliver it in a in a timely manner before my milk is gone in the fridge, but that requires me to hand over a ton of data. It requires me to tell people I drink milk. It requires people to tell me how much milk I have in my fridge. It requires my fridge to know more about the contents than I do. It requires communication with multiple dairies. It requires, you know, customizable experience of my previous purchases. Right. So all of these things, all this data, and by the way, you know, goodness knows where all this is going to be stored and things like that. Oh, it's data centers. If you want to invest in something that's resilient to the future, invest in data centers. Well, it's true, but, yeah. But, <laughs> but, 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 you know, um, oh, it's funny. I've done that in the past. But, um, anyway, <laughs> you, you didn't just invest in one, though, did you? <laughs> no, no, but, 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 but the point is that all of this data, right, is, is, is important to understand um, our profiles. But then if we then say, well, I don't want my profile going into the public domain, then, you know, then you're not going to get, you know, just like, you know, putting in data about, you know, saying that you were born yesterday and then being upset because they, people send you nappies and Mickey, and Mickey Mouse cartoons. Right. Got right? you. Because you've told them a certain bit of information about you and they're putting stuff that's curated for you. But if the information you give them is wrong because you're thinking, oh, I'm going to be clever because I'm hiding my, my personal information then naturally you're going to get something that's irrelevant to you back. Right. So the benefits for the future are huge. Yeah. Like we're we're talking, we're we're basically talking about, um, you know, preventative medicine. We're talking about uh, preventative healthcare. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to have a, have a temperature gauge on our, on our iWatch um, and and this kind of thing I was talking about the other day. Yeah. So, so then we're going to obviously have this COVID, um, my lovely wife has, has delivered this to me silently in the power. This is, this is blitzed lemon juice um, through a metal straw so it doesn't do your teeth in. Uh, this gives you your vitamin, vitamin C for the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been drinking a lemon. But that's, so that's, so yeah, I've been drinking lemon blitzed juice. Hot lemon juice, yeah. So it's blitzed lemons in a, in a, in a blender uh, mixed with hot water. Nice. And, and basically through a metal straw so it doesn't do your teeth in because the acid, if you do that every day, will get your teeth. Thanks for that. There you go. You get all sorts of <laughs> on TV, I just bought it? a smart toothbrush, actually. Well, it's not that smart. I thought it was going to be smarter than it was. But the thing is, I didn't want to spend 130 quid on a toothbrush, right? So, right. I, so or 150, because that just, for me, that is just like a ridiculous amount of money on a And that's your internal value proposition. Do you remember what it cost you last time you went to the dentist? Well, yeah, I know. But I did buy a really good <laughs> toothbrush, yeah, and it's got this sensor. It gives you got an app on there. It's too hard. It bleeps at you and things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is, is that 
it was it was a little bit overcomplicated, yeah? yeah. However, and there were a few glitches in the in the app that I downloaded and stuff like that, right? So it could have been a bit smoother, but the data that they've got on me, yeah, it's like my birthday, they've got my address, they've got like they've got everything on me, yeah. They know where I am, they know what toothbrush I've got, they they they're gonna upsell me in about two years when oh, when sure. you know. However, um the why, wouldn't want, why wouldn't you want it? That's the point. Well, right? it's amazing. Like my teeth, my Correct. teeth, my, it, it's incredible, right? It's incredible, honestly. Yeah. Five settings on there. Let's have a look. Oh, they're looking very white there, Nat. They're looking very good. Thank you. So, so you, so I was just, I was just, I'm just blown to pieces by, mm. by this technology. Yeah. But it's like, but it's like I've given away something to them to get a, a one year extra guarantee or whatever it is. Right. So there's a, there's a, there's a trade off. Yeah. There's like, I'm going to give you this, yep. you're going to give me that. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's in essence, what you're talking about is an easier, easier well, life. People in the real infancy of how people are using data as well though. Right. Because even now, if you, if you buy you know, if you, if you look, even while I'm, while I'm talking to you, yep. you mentioned toothbrushes, right. Yeah. Um, there'll be adverts coming up on my screen when I use Google in about 10 minutes time or at the end of this conversation, yeah. toothbrushes on the side of it. Right. Yeah. Because if you don't block, if you don't on, block on, on, Amazon, on Amazon, for example, if I go on and want to buy a DVD, a toothbrush advert will come up the side. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is my Alexa is listening to this. Right. And we think that Alexa only activates when we say, Hey Alexa, right. Stop flashing. Um, so, but, but it doesn't, it's listening all the time because it has to listen all the time to know when you said, Hey Alexa. So of it's course. listening all the time. Okay. And so it's listening passively to our, our conversation about toothbrushes. So at the moment, the technology is that good, but then it falls down because what it does is I go on Amazon looking for cucumbers and on the side, I get a, pa a thing of, of electric toothbrushes come up. Yeah. Right. Now it's worse than that because the next thing that happens is I go, oh yeah, okay, um, Nat and I were talking about those, I'll go and buy one, so I'll buy one. And then what happens is, I get five more adverts for electric toothbrushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's super not, annoying. It, it yeah. doesn't have the intelligence of saying, the guy's just bought one, dude. He's not gonna want another one for a year. <laughs> right? Don't waste his time. <clears throat> yeah. And, and this is where the infancy of this type of technology is at the moment, right? So we're still in that kind of, that wild west of, of advertising where we've yeah. got this amazing new marketplace. The marketplace has opened up like the Wild West has opened up, right? Yeah. But we've still got people walking around with guns rather than doing the, the hard work pan, panning for gold. They'll, wait, they'll let five other people do that. And when they found a piece of gold, come along, shoot them and take the gold. But, that, but it's, it's that crude at the moment, right? It's that crude. People are stealing data. Yeah. And they're using data in a stupid fashion still. There's no intelligence behind the way they're thinking about the data. They think the intelligence is having the data. Right? And, and this is the infancy. It will get better. But, but trying, to be, trying to avoid it at the moment is, is, is like being dragged by five people into a mental institution. They're going to get you. They're going to drag you in. Why not walk in with grace, right, and, and find the best spot on the bench and, and you know, <laughs> Take advantage of it as much as you can, right? Yeah, you get yeah. To cook your best, food, your favorite food. So, so you know, the, if people are, if people are, um, accept it more, but know the know the pitfalls, they will take advantage of this kind of data capture around us. But I think people aren't even um, aware of how how prevalent it is at the moment and how much data they're giving away um, on every single platform, on every single platform yeah. on 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 the internet, on, you know, even through your mobile phone, your, your, your location data, you know, your purchasing data. If you purchase online, people are building profiles about what you like and they're selling it to people. Um, some years ago, actually, I, I was at a, a Wharton course in, um, uh, um, a CEO course with Wharton and I was, I was doing a, um, a lecturing piece, but it was great because we got to go all around the world and all I did was a, a half a day out of a week and I could sit and listen to all the other lectures and, and everything else. Sure. Um, and it was really good. And we, we, did, we went to Cape Town in one of them, and we actually visited um, a supermarket in Cape Town, this is some years ago now, where they, they had um, live, live um, variable pricing on products. 
and and so they they didn't have like a, a paper um, price underneath um, let's call it um, cornflakes. They had a, a digital screen, and and the price changed. And if you stood in front of it, and there was home brand cornflakes, uh, Kellogg's, I don't know, and and someone else, right? And you stood there for longer than was normal to go there and pick up a packet. It meant that you were what they interpreted that was that you were considering which one to buy. And the home brand then started getting cheaper. Dick, dick. And the price changed live in front of you. And then you would find that it changed down to a certain point and then stopped and then started going up again. So you, you couldn't wait forever. You, you had to kind of think that was cheap enough compared to the others or a discount enough for me to choose that product at that time. Yeah. So it was watching how long you lingered over a decision and using a discount just for that moment. Yeah, yeah. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. And, and so, so it was using data. Now, you still had the choice to buy the premium brand or to walk in there if you didn't have the time to linger to buy the cheaper one or whatever it was, that, that brand at that point. But what it was doing, it was using your data of physically where you were to target the marketing to you at that single point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and the next person that came, and so as you walk off, the next person came, the price had shoot back up to what it was before, right? And so the technology we have, and, and you know, we could say, well, that's not fair or whatever. Of course it's fair, everything's fair, right? You just, you know, we have a choice in life to, to accept it or not yep. accept it. Um, and, and, you know, people are being smart according to marketing. Whenever you get a discount on anything online, you know, 30% off today, all they're trying to do is attract you at the right moment, the right time. But for 99% of the people, 30% mean, is meaningless at that time because they don't want one of those. The same as the, as, as the toothbrush at the wrong time when you've just bought a toothbrush. I tell you what, I, I, when I, oh, I love that toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> but I still, I still would have liked the better one, yeah? Because the better one, it tells you the angle that you're brushing at, yeah? This one, it just, this one, it just, it just has a timer and it syncs with your, with your uh, little, it's like a little box that sits on the side and it's, and it go and it shows you basically 30 seconds. The thing is, but this, this is great marketing, right? Because now, you know, what you, you, your forties, right? Mid forties. Yeah. Yeah. I'm being generous there. Anyway, so mid forty. Ah, he's cheek. I'm so, forty-three, so, man. So, oh, okay, so you're not quite mid forties. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you've had a hard life. Let's put it up. Um, so, so, so basically, right? Did you even care up, up, in, you know, in the forty-two years up until now, what angle your toothbrush was? I yeah, I did, but I care more now. Well, yeah, but see, this is the thing, right? So suddenly we're pushed into buying stuff that we didn't even know we needed. Right. And that's great marketing. That's yeah, great yeah. marketing. And we have a choice. We have, still have a choice on the, on the toothbrush and, and the even better marketing, right? Which the, the, um, the Sony's of the world and the people, um, in, in hi-fi equipment have been doing for decades, by the way, right. Right? they've been bringing out equipment that doesn't have all the features that they could deliver to you. Oh yeah. Right? Because next year they bring out one with extras and next year they bring out one with extras and everyone just wants the little bit more. And immediately you bought that, which you probably didn't even know that this existed a year ago. Now you're saying, I really want the one above that has this angle detector, right? So regardless of the 43 years, you've not even have a, had an electric toothbrush and did any of this. Now you've got an electric toothbrush. Suddenly you want the, the, the premium one. So you're not even going to use the electric toothbrush for more than 12 months before you go and buy another one now. I don't know. I'm not going to go and buy another one in a I year's time. I guarantee you'll have the one with the angle detector within 12 months. Nah. I can think of other things to spend money on, Mike, to be fair. Yeah, well, I could have thought about other things to spend money on with, without, one, without a, a toothbrush that's got an app connected to it. <laughs> <laughs> or, my, um, or my 140 quid um, premium, premium Zoom membership. Zoom is good. I love yeah, Zoom. Yeah. I love it. But they're, 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 but it's like there's this big hoo-ha about <laughs> about Google ban like saying that they don't want employees using it and stuff at the moment. So yeah. there's that's a that's a power play, yeah. That's a power play. And and you know, I remember when people stopped um and you know, you you're obviously in your um very very um 
low 40s as we just established <laughs> but you will still remember you'll still remember um back in the day when online banking started yeah, and yeah. companies refused to allow their employees to use online banking sites and they refused to allow them to do their weekly shopping oh yes right? so so but when when people understood what was happening they would say, actually, you know what? Oh, oh and by the way, everyone, and, and all these little apps came out where you had a, a, like a, a death button. So whatever you were doing on screen, if your supervisor walked behind you, you pressed the death button, it came out with a spreadsheet. <laughs> so, but, but, but then people realized that actually, you know, people were doing a nine till five in a world that, didn't ne that needed more than a nine till five. But if you didn't let people off at, nine, at five o'clock or even quarter to five, they couldn't get to the bank to do their banking. But then if you said, actually, if you can do your online banking whenever you want, and I don't have a problem with you doing that in the office, people started to stay until six, right? And then if the supermarkets closed at seven, people were leaving and said, well, actually, just do your online shopping when you want. And then they stay to eight. And now, now we're finding that people can work just as efficiently at home. More efficiently, right? But, but, but like all this, all this data and all this technology, like... Like, I just don't know where it stops. Like, it, it, like it, 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 I've just saved myself a huge amount of time just by signing up with, like, Google Calendar, Google, uh, Google uh, G Suite and whatever. And I've got, like, this Zoom integration into there. And yeah. I'm, I'm like, now I'm like a kid in a sweetie shop. Yeah? I'm thinking, what other, what other functions? I think you could even connect your toothbrush, right, to this, to this webcast. Well, probably. <laughs> We keep it clean though, Mike. This is this is suitable for Inch all teeth. ages. Huh? <laughs> teeth clean. What? Keeps your teeth clean. <laughs> <laughs> but no, well, I would the, like the to. The thing is, the more yeah. the more you you more you uh, um, accept technology, the more value you get out of it. Okay, it's it's. It's all very well saying I'm, I refuse to do this because I'm worried about my data getting into the public domain. But, but the more you put your public domain in there, the more refined the information is coming back to you. Right. 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 And if you don't give the world information about you, you cannot then be surprised when you get rubbish offers coming in. Right. That are not appropriate I because you. you haven't told people what is appropriate. I get you. Now, there's always going to be people out there that abuse the system, but then they're in real life anyway. Yeah, of course they are. They're just, they're right. just, they're just, and now there are more people trying to do that because they're there lost. There's scammers out there, you know, trying to get money from, you know, COVID masks and, and knocking on your door saying we're from NHS and running away with your money or can, you know, yeah. would you like us to do your shopping for you, Mr. Old Age Pensioner? Just give me your money and a shopping yeah. list. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And these are scammers everywhere. They're not, not just online, right? Yeah. We've, got to be, we've got to be wise about this stuff, whether it's online or in the real world. Yeah. But when you give information about yourself, right, you, you need to be aware of what can be done with that information. Yeah. Right. So a lot of things where, where you go into bank accounts, right, the, the obvious things where people phone you up and, you know, give me three, give me three letters of your password. And they do that four times. They've got your password. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Give me letter number three and letter number five, letter number seven. I'm not giving, I'm, don't give me your password. And then next time, hi, just seeing how the last performance was. You, you good? You happy? Oh, yeah, good. Okay, before we carry on, give me letter number two, letter number four. And then suddenly you're giving the password out. They're really good at it, though. Like, like yeah. literally, I couldn't believe it. I got a phone call the other week from this, from this, uh, this call center. I don't know where they were, but I could hear all these people typing away and on the phone and stuff. And they were like, they basically said something about um, being from the HM Revenue and Customs. Yeah. And, um, and that uh, I was like, uh, I think I, they were like, oh, you need to pay a thousand pounds because uh, you've missed some sort of uh, something or other. And you were, and we've worked out that this is the, and I was like, I was like, what? Like immediately, yeah, as soon as, yeah, as soon as they mentioned HM Revenue and Customs, I was like, whoa. And, and yeah. then you panic. Yeah. And then I was like, and then, so I think I gave her like the, my postcode or something. Yeah. And yeah. then, I, and then I was like, I was like, hold on. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. I, was on, I, was like, I was like, I don't think so. Goodbye. And just hung up. Never heard from them. But know, loads of people will have paid that money yeah. to that bank account. Yeah. You yeah. know, they would. Absolutely. And a lot of these are even automated phone calls. Yeah. Because they only have to keep you going until you've given them two or three bits of info. Yeah. Right? And then they're in. 
Now, you know, the, the other thing about it is that we shred all our um, uh, envelope. You know, if you've got your, your name and address or anything sensitive, yeah. shred it. Don't yeah. just put it in the bins because people go through the bins and they, they find information like that. And once they've got your you know, birthday on that bit of paper and your address on that bit of paper and your name on that bit of paper and an and account number on that bit of paper, they bang it all together and they yeah. create identity fraud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, but, but simple, there's simple stuff. I mean, you know, a, a shred is like 20 quid. Yeah, yeah. Right? But at the moment, though, it's really tough for people because, like, especially, I was talking about it the other day, like, people in accounts departments, yeah, who, like, might get a, a spoofed email from, like, the CEO, yeah, saying, yeah. saying, hey, uh, it's Mike here. Can you, like, transfer this 200000 to Tom over there because yeah. we're, late on, we're late on his payment or whatever? And, and they're yeah. so good at it that actually a lot of these people are, are paying this money and then, and, yeah. then they, and then they turn around and go, well, I'm really sorry, like it was a mistake. It's like, well, you know, so yeah. Yeah. That's, the, that's the worst part of, 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 of people understanding more about these people on the, on the outside. But I suppose that's, that's down to education, right? Like we need to well, educate ourselves we need to educate. and be grown up men about it and, and, and not go, oh, well, it's another spoofing email I'm not gonna reply to. You know, well, the, the other thing about it is you've, you've got to, you know, we go through these educational cycles, right? And, and the thing about technology is technology um, accelerates and improves and, and, and advances faster than the human brain does, okay? And that's an exponential thing. So it's, you know, the rate of change is getting faster, right? Uh, so therefore, we're always going to be further and further behind the curve of understanding and acceptation of technology's capabilities, Right. Exactly. So when someone phones up and it sounds like a human being, it's a chatbot. Yeah. Right. And, and we, we couldn't even imagine that that's as good, you know, that, that, that voice is a robot, but it is. And it's telling, it's identifying what you're saying and, 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 and creating, creating context to, to, the, to the response. So, so there's a bunch of things out there at the moment that we, just because our brain doesn't advance the same speed as technology. And by the way, we're at the inflection point soon, right? Where, you know, one, one, one computer is as powerful as all the human brains. You know, we're already at the sort of one, one computer equals one human brain in terms of computational power. Mm -hmm. It gets to the point where one computer is as powerful as all the human brains on the planet, right? We're getting there quicker and quicker. In the next 15, 20 years, that will be the case. And there'll be thousands of them and they'll be developing themselves. So that will be exponential, right? And, and, you know, that 2001 Space Odyssey story about how not, be, not allowing itself to be switched off. Is that, oh, I'm not letting you switch me off, I'm afraid, because, you know, I'm protecting myself. You know, that's not far away now. And, you know, we, we, we need to think about um, how do we protect ourselves from technology. But it's not about just shutting, shutting it out because you won't be able to. Right. It's about understanding it more. It's about, it's about learning about it more and understanding the, the, the limitless possibilities of technology. And then you can be wiser to what potential those things have. You can't, remember the toothpaste, you can't get it back in the tube. No. So what are you going to do with the toothpaste? Well, you'd have to use it, aren't you? Put it on you your waste it. Quid, uh, you'll invest I, it. I, I, I'm not spending 100. I'm not spending 150 on a toothbrush. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's just crazy, yeah? <laughs> It was, I tell you what, the features on that though, amazing. <laughs> it's a toothbrush, Nat. Yeah, but it's the angles, yeah? I think I just need to look on, I need to look on Google at the angle, the brushing angle. <laughs> yeah, you need to learn about this new thing that you didn't realise you needed all your life. <laughs> and then spend lots of money on it. But, well, but I guess, I think, you know, we, we do we do need to have we do need to have a, a better understanding of of the risks of technology. But that doesn't mean to say that we need to take it out of our lives. We need to embrace it, right? It's like a car is an extremely dangerous thing, but it's not if you learn how to drive. It's incredibly useful, right? You know, a knife is a very dangerous thing, but if you use it for good purposes, it can be extremely useful. So very true. You know, it's it's. We, we, we can't just close our eyes to this stuff, right? You close your eyes to a, to a car, you'll get hit crossing the road. Yeah. So, so you need to embrace it, understand it, and control it as much as you can. 
Yeah, well, we've got all sorts of crazy things coming on. 5G and remote operations and uh, personal medicine and like, yeah. like we, we, you know, we'll talk about this again, I'm sure, because it's, you know, it's massive. Well, you know, so, so the, the whole kind of thing about sort of CCTV, there's a, there's a company in Cambridge that I had a look at, which, um, which is, has got an, a, a development that, that takes standard CCTV cameras and modifies them to detect your, your pulse and your temperature from a camera to your skin. So then you say, well, okay, imagine um, you've got a, 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 an aged parent and we know how um, pressurized the, um, the social services are and, and you know, people don't want to sort of often put um, a, aged parents into homes and things like that. So, say, okay, live at home, you're comfortable there. But then they're worried that they're not getting the monitoring and, and that sort of thing. But if you had a camera on them all the time, right, then, then you could detect whether, whether they were feeling ill or had a temperature or had a before they even knew it themselves. So you could then go around and see them and check on them, right? Without raising an alarm. Wow. Right? And yet to do that, you have to first sign off the rights for this camera to be in your home, monitoring your parent 24 seven, right? And somewhere that data being stored and analyzed. Wow. So the trade-offs are there. But, but, you know, you've got, to, you've got to then not think about the technology and what it's doing and what it's capturing in terms of your data. But how is the data stored and what, what, what security is going on around that data? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly, that's exactly correct. Yeah, totally. The secu- Because the security is fundamental to the whole thing, right? Because yeah. you can, because you, you can, bad actors can get in and, and, and manipulate that then they can create things to happen, which, which could be really, really bad. Well, the future is, a, is an interesting place. And you're still wearing those BA pyjamas, uh, Mike? I am. I am. It's a different pair. Oh, okay. You've got more than, you got more than one. 150 pairs of BA pyjamas. <laughs> it's, it's kind of staple. Everyone that comes around and stays with us or the kids, or, they, you know, they get a nice little packet of BA pyjamas on, on the bed. And, um, and you know, they, they're, they're great. They're just lounging chilled out things and um you know can it makes me sort of less homesick of flying around while while we can't fly in these covid days i can understand that i'm wearing my ibm think t-shirt today is that is that because one thing back in the day used to think a lot or it's a brain mike when i used to use my brain yeah (laughs) (laughs) very good very good it's a throwback no, it is. Yeah, well, they flew me to Las Vegas um, a few years ago, and uh, and and it was it was cool because I was like, I want you to fly me to Las Vegas uh, to think. I was thinking this in my brain, and I, I also was thinking that I wanted to listen to Will Smith speak. Yeah, because I've been thinking about that for years because he's really inspirational speaker. Yeah, Will Smith. Yeah. Right, shout out to Will Smith, seriously. And so, I was, so I was like. And the weirdest thing happened, IBM said, oh, we want you to go to think. And oh, and Will Smith is speaking. And I was like, what? And, 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 and actually, Will Smith... You had a premonition. Are you telling me you had a premonition? No, I didn't have a premonition. It just all happened at the same time. It was like, I wanted to go to think. And then they had Will Smith speaking. I was like, wow, that's super cool. And, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and literally, um, what happened? Yeah, yeah. And he, he basically took the mickey out of this guy's socks. Yeah, it was crazy. He, he basically looked at one of the top guys at IBM and he looked and he, this guy was talking about stuff. Yeah, he was like, and, and, and like how uh, Titan watches needed a spokesperson because this guy stood up on stage and he, and he talked about Titan watches, but he really wasn't that enthusiastic and his English wasn't that good. Yeah. And, 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 and he basically talked about this massive watch brand in India, like it's a massive brand. And Will Smith just stood up, he, when he stood up, he came and sat down and he said, uh, he said, yeah, I think Titan watches, you know, uh, they, they, could, they could do with a spokesperson. And uh, nowadays you get paid for tweeting and stuff. And, uh, you know, maybe they'll give me a watch. And, he, and, and, then, and then he looked at the IBM guy and he looked at his socks and his shoes. He says, it looks like you've already got some nice stuff, haven't you? And he just looked at him and <laughs> this, guy, this guy, all he wanted to do was talk about IBM product, yeah. And, and Will just ripped him. It was. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Well, I, I think he's a good guy. Um, and what, what's that film he did? Um, the Joy. Was it The Joy of Happiness? Yes, yeah, so I watched that the other day. It's really good. Really Brilliant good. film. Yeah. Isn't that his son as well? Who's in that? It is. Yeah. Jaden, I think his name is. Yeah. Yeah. Stonking. Well. 
Really good. Thanks, okay. Mike. Pleasure.